Well, sometimes things just don't go as planned. A five, six, seven, eight. So I flew into Houston on March 3rd to start back into rehearsals for the premiere of Pretty Things, all to the music of David Bowie. Straight from the airport, I went to go meet Houston Ballet principal dancer Chen Wei Chan for some authentic Chinese food. Um, so what, what are we eating today, Chen? Um, we had beef filet and this one leaf is this? Uh, that's the leaves of um, another... Sweet potato? I don't think so. Leaf of... Uh, I think so. I mean, that's the Chinese name. Leaf of sweet potato? Mm -hmm. I don't think they have leaves. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. We'll find out. We'll find out. Okay. <laughs> um, I hit the ground running and came into rehearsal on the first day. We were all so excited to get back into this piece. Um, worked with the dancers in the studio, and I had an interview in the morning with the Houston Chronicle. Um, and then at that evening, I uh, did a dance talk in the theater studio at Houston Ballet with a really like wonderful, enthusiastic audience with a lot of great friends from the past. And we all got ourselves really revved up for the show. Um, yeah, so the first day that he was um, here with us for rehearsal, I remember a few of the more senior men in the company were kind of really starting to like warm up. They were starting to stretch and do all these things. And we were like, why are you guys getting ready so intensely for this? And he was like, just, or like Ian Cassidy, he's a principal. He was like, just get ready to dance. And, um, you know, and it, we were like, we were like, it's gonna be fine, you know? And um, there's, there's just a high level of focus and that you have to have. And I had done, I actually worked with Don um, in uh, Peter Pan with Shadows and uh, the Pirates and um, I did In Dreams last season but this was my first new creation and he comes in with this I know what I want and this is and so when he delivers that there's no time or room to be like what do you mean or like you know like what it's just like you kind of look at your, I do I dance with Connor a lot in it and you kind of look and you say okay here we go and um it was very physical. It was it was <laughs> nonstop dancing, but you feed off of his energy, and David Bowie music really really helps to dance to, and um, so it's fun. And then we we have five minute breaks, and after at the five, it's, he's like, okay, sorry, we have to stop, and we kind of look at each other and run to water, and like, how are we gonna do two more hours of this? <laughs> um, that was just the first hour, but um, it's just so fun, and it's so um, it's so physical. So I'm heading into the theater today for uh, my first lighting rehearsal and that means we sit in the dark without any dancers on stage and see the set for the first time and decide on what the lighting cues are going to be and do some experiments and stuff. Uh, so it's an exciting first step. I find it much more effective when people understand this is the idea. We all have to be on board to make that happen. I think we're, we're from my perspective, I'm a day and a half away from yay. Perfect. Maybe. We'll see how much more time out of that day and a half they give me. Okay. Mm -hmm. I do, if there's time, there's a couple places where I want to be a little bit more rock and rolly and hit the beat a little bit more. So last night uh, I made a really dumb mistake and sliced my finger open trying to open a bottle. Um, not a bottle of liquor, mind you, I was totally sober. It was a bottle of literally probiotics. I was trying to take care of myself and look what happened. Uh, so I had to go to the emergency room and get five stitches. Um, the real painful thing about stitches is the gigantic needle that they put deep inside of you to numb the pain of the stitches. One, two, three, stick. Oh, 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 oh,
on the other side. Oh of my god, again? Yeah, I'm sorry. Again, it's happening again. One, two, three. <laughs> That's the biggest <laughs> demon in the world. <laughs> you should laugh at <laughs> Burning again? Today I am going in to do a radio interview on the University of Houston campus to promote the show. And joining me now in the studio, Trey McIntyre. Hello, Trey. Hey, thanks for having me. Peter Pan, change the way I saw ballet. Amazing. You did an amazing Peter Pan. Thank you. And it felt so much more theatrical than I was used to mm. in, in ballet. And I always, I point to that as the point where my appreciation for ballet grew. And I saw it as much more than just dance on stage, but as a much fuller art, art form. That's incredible. What a nice compliment. I appreciate it, it that. Was, it was spectacular. Well, I'm starting work on my next full length. Oh, really? What's yeah. it going to be? Weekend at Bernie's. I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to tell. I don't want to say it. You don't want to say uh, it? Yeah, yeah, it's still secret. I did so much press promoting this show. Um, even the sweet lady that works at the front desk at the ballet, um, she cut out the article from the Chronicle to give to me. I really appreciate you cutting that out for me, by Are the way. Are you kidding, Trey? I was so thrilled to see this. I mean, <laughs> this was just th the best thing in the whole world and deserved and well deserved. We had a big fancy party on stage to celebrate the opening with the underwriters and had a great tech rehearsal. We did all the things you do leading up to opening night. And then... So I'm in the lobby outside the theater. We're about to go into our final um, lighting rehearsal in the afternoon. I'm kind of on pins and needles because we're waiting to see uh, if the shows are going to happen. There's the rodeo, which is canceled because of the coronavirus. Uh, and so we're gonna see if the theater's gonna be open. That's gonna be weird if the shows get canceled or postponed, probably more likely. Um, well, how I attack my Mac dick. Um, so stay tuned. Well, I won't keep you in suspense. Um, we all woke up the morning of the show, excited about opening that night, and then we got the call that the show had been postponed. Sucks. Such a bummer, eh? This piece is going to be wild once the audience sees it, so I'm very excited. I, uh, it was so great to get to see that we did that run through last night because it was such a good performance. Everybody was like, yeah. that was a really good show. Yeah, that was a show. <laughs> I mean, I think it's good though because we're just going to get even better at it and it's going to be even more badass than it was already. So there you go, coronavirus. <laughs> Take that. <laughs> so the dancers and I still met for rehearsal that afternoon to say our goodbyes and to express some gratitude about what a great process it had been. Um, I also went ahead and gave them their opening night gifts, um, which was a t-shirt. And I made these little patches that um, featured one element of the set and then one that had HB that stands for Houston Ballet. Um, and then I also gave them all their magnets uh, that I made of their faces uh, that I'd been using in rehearsals. So they each have their own now. So it is clearly a heartbreaking moment in time for everybody right now. Um, really hard and disappointing uh, to not get to have the performance, but easy to keep it in perspective when there are people who are losing their lives over this virus. So um, still disappointing nonetheless, and it's hard to uh, put all that work in for everybody involved and then not have a performance. But um, we'll all hang in there, and I think all the world's going to need once we get out of this is some really excellent dance. So... We're gonna look forward to bringing this piece to you when the time comes. Uh, and in the meantime, take care, wash your hands a lot, and uh, see you next episode.